Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Oh, let's have a little colder. Wish I had a little more fresh water. I'm gonna go get a little more fresh water. Everybody join my page or join my live. If you want, if you want. Let's drink in stalish water. Who wants to drink stale water first thing in the morning? Good morning, Josh Ha Grand. Thank you so much for liking the lives. Sorry that I wasn't here when you tuned in. Good morning, TK, and hi. Oh, didn't really do very many stretches this morning. Oh, it's kind of hard getting out of bed. It's kind of hard. Wow, what a quiet morning. What a quiet morning. Maybe I'll just FaceTime Josh from now on. I don't have Josh's number. Josh and I have never actually talked. <laughs> but rather than create all this big to-do about going live on a various social media platform, maybe I should just want do one-on-one -on -one coffee with Ken's. Hello, Ann. Good morning, Julie Flanagan. Good morning, Mel B. And good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. It is Friday morning. It is 6.40 a.m. It is October 18th. The way I did that and calculated that, I'm hoping I'm right or my story's going to really be not that important. Uh, my older brother was born on October 5th and it was a Saturday this year. <laughs> so the way I calculated the date was added 7 to the October 5th, which got me to the 12th. And then I added another 7th, which got me to tomorrow, Saturday, the 19th. And then I subtracted one. And I realized today was October 18th. <laughs> so happy uh, Friday. <laughs> Good morning, Chip. How are you? Happy Friday. It's a little show I've been doing for quite some time. It is a show about me talking. It is a show about me sharing some experiences, kind of sharing some feelings and what one man goes through in life as he travels down his path. Yesterday's path was a little bumpy, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Actually, the last several days, uh, path has been bumpy, and you could see it. I could feel it in my show and feel it in my body and feel it in my chest, feeling anxious and feeling worried and afraid and all this sort of stuff, all these sort of yucky, yucky feelings. Uh, but I feel a little better today, and I'm feeling a little more okay. And uh, feeling better and feeling more okay uh, feels pretty good when you're starting to lose hope and lose faith and be afraid and, I don't know, worried all the time. It's no fun being worried all the time, but at least I realize that I shouldn't be worried all the time. And that's not a good state to be or the way we're meant to be. And uh, uh, at least work through it for now. And uh, here I am. But anyway, for those that have been watching a while, you know it is not just a show about me talking. You know it is also a show about me uh, sharing my love of coffee. Got to, I'm not totally sure what I'm drinking here. I'm not totally sure what I'm drinking here. But uh, I have a nice hot cup of coffee, and I'm very excited to take my first sip at this relatively early hour on this Friday morning. My hope is wherever you are and whatever you're doing, uh, that you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers, Toss. Oh. 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 
It's a toasted coconut <laughs> by, I don't know, Fredericks or something. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Hold on, let me take another sip. I was confused. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself. It's not the first time I've been wrong on the flavor of coffee I was drinking. I had two bags of the Frederick's coffee that uh, you get at Meyer. I guess that's the might be the Meyer brand. And um, one was the cinnamon and one was the coconut. And I was going, ah, which should I choose? Which should I choose? And then I looked on the back of my shelf. And there has been a bag of uh, smoked butterscotch <laughs> staring at me uh, that I didn't think was enough left in the bag and was just kind of hanging out for some later date. And as I was debating between the cinnamon and the coconut, I looked back and said, you know, how much is left in here? How much is left in here? I got maybe enough to make a pot. Why don't I make a pot? I've been kind of not saving it, just not sure what to do with it for the longest time or for a couple of weeks at least. See how it is. And while doing so, cleaning off my counter a little bit because I've removed one bag of coffee from the equation. And it's more than just that. And I think that's why it's important to declutter things in our lives and remove things and, uh, I don't know, take out the garbage. It's, it's not just... Um, that there's clutter on my uh, uh, counter. It's, it's clutter in my mind that I see it every morning and go, huh, that's still sitting there. What am I going to do with it? You know, is there enough left to make a pot? Should I make it today? No, okay. Well, maybe tomorrow. And then the same thoughts go through uh, every day. So what's my message right now? <laughs> I don't know. Clean out your closets, clean out your garage, clean out your life, clean out your mind, uh, clean out your heart, your soul, your body, the things you probably don't need and uh, that you're kind of dragging along uh, like you do need them and you don't. Like the old ripped up t-shirts or old sweatshirts that you're saving because of memories or the shirt that you don't feel fits anymore or has a stain on it, but you don't want to throw it out because you might need it when you're running low on laundry. And uh, you, so you bring it along and you kind of see it every day in your cabinet or your counter or your drawer. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of weighs on you. It weighs on me at least. So now my toasted butterscotch won't weigh on me anymore. Smoked butterscotch. And I'll get to enjoy it as God intended me to. Mm. Thank you so much, Terry Jacobs, for sending me my pumpkins. I appreciate that. And sharing my live. I think somebody else shared my live earlier. Got a fairly nice audience early on on this uh, Friday morning. I was thinking back to last night. Uh, slept pretty well. And I did not work last night, but I had some free time. And sometimes, especially when you struggle with anxiety a little bit, free time is, uh, what do they say, the devil's playground. And to fill that time is, uh, uh, I felt the need to be super productive. And I've been working as a waiter in a restaurant here in Naperville over the last, I don't know, maybe almost three months now. And... Uh, uh, for a while, thought it was my forever, not forever destination, but for an extended period destination and was enjoying working there and happened to come in right as they were switching shifts from summer to fall and winter. And they lost a lot of employees just because they went back to school or what have you. And they hired me and I was like the first hire of the fall. And I was given a ton of hours and was making pretty darn good money and was figuring that, hey, maybe this along will be enough for me while I uh, build coffee with Ken. And, but they started hiring because they need more employees. They can't rest all their hope on me. So they started hiring and uh, at first it was slowly, but my shifts got cut back from like six 
a week and maybe able to pick up an extra one to uh, uh, four or what have you. And four's not going to do it for me. And I was going, okay, how do I make this work with four shifts a week? And I was trying to dive into social media and build that quicker and control that and solve things. But I was also going, okay, maybe I need to look for other jobs. And I put together a resume and I started applying for jobs, some of which I didn't even want or don't, even worse, uh, didn't think I was qualified for. Didn't think I was qualified for. And, you know, various levels. Uh, one was a job as a bartender. And uh, although I'm good at talking, I'm not good at multitasking to the 10th power. And I think that's what this restaurant needed. Uh, but I was putting myself out there and said, hey, you know, I'll give it my best. But in the back of my mind, I had a lot of doubts. And those doubts started to grow and started to spread and started to infest me. And, uh, yeah, last night, uh, yeah, last night I, uh, reached out to a woman I know. I don't even really know her well, uh, but I kind of bumped in, bumped into one of her uh, relatives and she's in HR and I, you know, I don't think I have an issue with my resume. I think it looks fairly good. I think the issue comes more from within. And my mental confidence on any given day can fluctuate uh, probably more than it should. I'm an emotional guy and I have a lot of highs and lows. and That's kind of what the show's about. But my confidence can wane and explode. <laughs> Some days I think I can be CEO of a company. Some days I don't feel I'm fit to uh, clean the bathroom. And uh, yesterday was one of those days I didn't feel fit to clean the bathroom. And I'm going, gosh, you know, I'm applying for these jobs. I don't know if I want them. I don't know if they'd be enough money. And I don't know if I'm even qualified to do them. And this isn't probably the first time anybody's uh, experienced these feelings. I think when you don't know exactly, if you're in a clear career path and you're an accountant, and you love accountancy, and you're working at one accountant firm, and you're being recruited to another accountant firm, you can kind of bounce around in your own career or niche or whatever, and move your way up the ladder and find yourself up at a much higher position. But when it feels like you're starting over every time uh, when you switch a career, uh, at least for me, it can be tough. And uh, uh it was tough yesterday. It was tough yesterday. And I reached out to this woman I know, and again, she's in HR, and I was kind of hesitant to send uh, my resume off to her. Uh, I think I was probably flirting with her when I suggested it the first time uh, and sent it in a text, but she said I'd need to email it to her. And I go, hey, I really, I thought about it and said I could really use this woman's help. Uh, maybe I could, uh, uh, email it to her. And she asked if I had a LinkedIn profile. I was a little embarrassed because I'm looking for a job. I don't have a LinkedIn profile. Not that I've ever gotten a job through a LinkedIn profile, but I think a lot of, uh, companies probably start their, uh, search of you there. You might ask, why don't you have a LinkedIn profile, Ken? And if you did, I have an answer for you. Maybe you don't know. I was a realtor for 17 years. And I had my own uh, email address. One I never liked, by the way. It was Ken at uh, TracyRealtyGroup.com. And I always wanted to form a team. Or at least I thought I wanted to form a team. I thought that was the natural progression of my real estate career, where I'd be the top of the pyramid and having buyer's agents and listing agents working for me. And it never really developed. A couple times I add somebody, usually uh, my wife or someone uh, at the time, and it'd feel like a team and it'd feel like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, but I realized I didn't want to do it anymore. And I had, <laughs> I had been getting all my emails for years, uh, for years sent uh, to this Ken at Tracy Realty Group email address. And, uh, 
you had to, I had to pay. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was something. And I wasn't a realtor anymore. And I was telling people my email address. Good morning, Kim Williams. I was telling people my email address was uh, Ken at Tracy Realty Group. And I'm like, hey, this feels, A, it's long. <laughs> B, it's not true. I don't, I'm not even in real estate. And I'm certainly not a group. So I uh, let it expire and decided, I, you know, I don't know what I was paying, whether it was a month or a year, but either way, it was something. And uh, um, let it expired. And LinkedIn was sending me various alerts saying, hey, they'd emailed me. Please refresh something on the email we sent you to keep your account safe and I ignored it as I have a tendency to do. Hey, I didn't think LinkedIn was super important. <laughs> I still don't, but either way, I probably should have a profile because then I could have emailed this woman a resume. But my story goes on. And uh, eventually one day I tried to hop on LinkedIn for something and it said uh, something had passed or my email didn't work or something. And I tried various combinations to get in because I'd had that profile for a long time and I'd had a lot of contacts and connections and stuff. But I go, eh, things are happening for a reason. And honestly, didn't really miss LinkedIn uh, at all. Uh, didn't miss LinkedIn at all. Until yesterday, when the woman asked if I could send her to her through LinkedIn. I explained to her a much briefer version uh, of my story. I think I said, hey, I'm just a mess. I'm sorry, my LinkedIn, I'm probably more of a mess than you need to handle. And uh, more of a mess than... Uh, you need to handle it. You need to worry about. And uh, she was kind and gave me her email address and I sent it to her and she was professional and said, received, thank you. I'll review it, whatever. And uh, sent me a couple words of encouragement, more than a couple, and it was nice. And maybe sometimes in life you just need a word of encouragement or a kind heart or somebody to reach out to. And this woman was there for me yesterday, and she barely even knows who I am. But she was nice and uh, kind of changed my attitude. I have an interview today at 10 and uh, was debating even going, was debating even going because my self-esteem and my doubt was so uh, low. Or my, my doubt was high, my self-esteem was low. And I go, I won't like this job. They won't hire me. I'll suck at it. It doesn't pay well. You know, it's probably not what I want to do. Would I be any good at it? Is that the right season for it? You know, I actually sent the woman uh, a video of me talking and I, I, who was scheduling the appointment. I think it was just a receptionist scheduling uh, the interview. And uh, uh, I sent her a YouTube video of me and I asked, hey, you know, because I, I don't know, I was feeling all these doubts and all this negativity and didn't want to waste anybody's time. And I said, hey, would you hire me? Here's me. Here's me. Watch this video. Would you hire me? And she said, unfortunately, my uh, email address or something can't allow me to access outside links or something like that. And... Uh, so she didn't see it, but she scheduled me for 10. And I was going, all right, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to cancel. I'm not going to do this job. I don't want to do this job. I bet they don't pay any money, this and that. I won't be good at it, blah, 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 blah. And I told, those were my thoughts. Again, a very brief version to the woman I'd sent my resume to yesterday. And uh, she kind of put a sunshiny face on it, a smiley attitude about it. And uh, said I should go. So I'm going to go. <laughs> and I'm going to do the best I can and be me and be a little more positive than I was yesterday. And realize 
I don't know what the job's all about or what its uh, uh, potential it may or may not have or my fit in it or what they're looking for. But I do know in some ways I think I'll be extremely uniquely qualified for this job. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I don't know why, just for fun. Because it doesn't matter. I think a lot of times people ask for, uh, yeah, it's networking and interviews are good practice. And pulling my head out of the gutter is good practice. And uh, yeah, shaking a hand and looking somebody in the eye and uh, is good practice. And it'll be good for me. Uh, Alexandra Hope says career confusion is tough. I'm at that point now too. Yeah, I'm sure it's tougher as we age. I think if we're right out of college and we have a degree in physical therapy, you type in physical therapist and you see a list of jobs that are hiring. Or if you have a CPA, you type in CPA. But I uh, think while um, when you're making a big switch, it's really tough. And my hope was when I left real estate that I'd find something to tide me over while uh, I grew coffee with Ken. And for a guy that feels he can kind of control the world a little bit, (laughs) I felt in real estate, if I just worked really hard, I'd sell a lot of homes and As far as content creation, I thought if I poured more time in it and edited more videos and posted more videos and went live more and did this more and got merch and this and that, I could control it and make it grow more quickly. And this morning I was listening, when I woke up, I was having a bunch of negative thoughts and kind of fears and worries, but not overwhelming. I had the negative thoughts, but I also had a little... Uh, maybe pep in my step, even though I was laying horizontally on my bed. So I don't know that I truly had pep in my step, but I think you get the point. A feeling of meaning and purpose and productivity today. And I knew what my day looked like. And I uh, uh, laid there and listened to this mellow music and (laughs) noticed the negative feelings were still kind of bouncing around in my head and thought about that for a while and prayed a little bit and thought about some gratitude and God yelled me, get your ass up out of bed. (laughs) You're having negative thoughts. Get moving. Get moving. Go for it. Get your coffee started. Get your day started and keep going. Oh, see, Lisa said the Alumni Association at U of I probably has a career center that can help with the resume and a LinkedIn profile. Honestly, I don't think I need a heck of a lot of help with, I think my resume looks pretty dang good. And I think my LinkedIn profile I could put together and look pretty dang good. I think I know I'm, I know how to do that. Yeah, you can always make them better. But I don't think that was my real issue, Lisa. I think my real issue was I didn't have the belief in myself to even go to an interview today or a belief in the world uh, that there'd be something out there, uh, uh, something out there that would match my skill set. And I was feeling down. And again, uh, I was realizing, uh, I was realizing that where I was at was just kind of a stopping stone, a rest stop, and uh, not a permanent place of employment. And I was struggling with that the last few days because I wanted to make the restaurant I'm at the perfect partner for my content creation. And my plan (laughs) was... Pick up every shift I can and post as many videos as I can and I'll make enough money waiting tables and I'll grow my content creation enough that as the waiter job fades away a little bit, just 
because they probably wouldn't let me work seven days a week, every week. Uh, my content creation will grow just in the right time. And I thought things happened for a reason and everything had laid out to get me to that destination. But sometimes things happen for a reason that we don't understand. Uh, some things happen that we don't understand and they're meant to take us somewhere else. And I think whether the interview goes great today at 10 o'clock or not, or I get hired for the job or I'm right for the job or they're right for me or the opportunity's right, it'll be good practice. Uh, I'm feeling a heck of a lot better than I did uh, yesterday. And I feel I have a little determination. I tell you what, though, if I may cut myself some slack, I got a lot of things on my plate, a lot of things I'm struggling with. But let me go get some coffee. And I think I was joking when I said, if I may cut myself some slack. And the reason I say this is... Uh, for you all to think uh, about cutting yourself some slack as well, that um, I think sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. Uh, sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. I'm certainly too hard on myself. Yeah. Aurora asked, "Does my wife work to support me in the meantime?" I'm not married. I might have referred to my wife. She was my wife at the time when we were in real estate. I'm twice divorced. Twice divorced with four beautiful kids. So I don't eat, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I don't uh, feel I'm only here trying to support myself or keep a roof over my head. I feel uh, the need to do that for my kids that I don't even live with and uh, still be the best dad I can. And that's a hard mix of feelings for a guy that wants to be the best dad he can and doesn't get to see his kids as often as he'd like because he's trying to pick up every shift at the restaurant that he can and post every video he can and uh, find the next career. And I think that's been a weighing on me heavily too. And I'm taking steps to get that worked out. Um, and maybe the interview's one small step. Maybe they have something for me. Maybe it is the right place at the right time. It's, it puts me in a better mood just kind of joking with that and saying that and uh, thinking that it is. Uh, it feels a lot better to be positive than it does to be negative. Uh, and yesterday felt crappy. Again, I didn't work. I was came back uh, after whatever, around 3 o'clock yesterday and was sitting in here and going, all right, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And feeling panic. And... Uh, uh, yeah. Armando, I believe that. Armando says all things happen for a reason. Something better is on the way. I definitely do. Aurora's saying they wish me luck. They wish they could find a job and find a home. Well, Aurora, I'm glad you tuned in today uh, because uh, perhaps you need a mental switch as well. Maybe we can take a mental switch together and uh, uh, realize that Maybe for me and for you, your biggest issue isn't lack of a job or lack of a home, although it sure feels like that. It's lack of a good attitude and the attitude that'll get you the home and get you the job. And again, for me, I don't think tweaking my resume or even putting together a LinkedIn profile uh, was the most important thing. Uh, the most important thing was probably reaching out and asking for help from a woman I don't really know very well, but I know is talented. And although I went to her with help for my resume, which I think is quite fine. Uh, but what I really needed from her was a few kind words and a little bit of experience and a pat on the back, maybe. Well, that's not exactly what I'm saying, Aurora. <laughs> Aurora said they agree with me. The LinkedIn is not important. That's not what I'm saying exactly. And I don't want you getting the, my message is wrong. I'm saying uh, what is most important is our 
the way we view ourselves. And if we got the best profile or the best resume in the world, if we feel like crap about who we are, uh, you know, we're not going to have the strength to go on the interview or send out the resume. You know, so good morning, Josh. Oh, it's going to be a long day today, though. I'm going from uh, my interview at 10. There I start work at my restaurant. And uh, uh, we'll start working at my restaurant at uh, noon today. Ryan said, don't you think working two jobs will add revenue to the max? <laughs> I laugh. Amazon and waiter could accomplish this. I, I only laugh because I don't think anyone has m taken multiple jobs to prosperity. I think you're so better off, and I could be wrong. Uh, you're better finding one right job. I mean, I don't know anyone that's working three jobs that's making a ton of money. I've worked three jobs before. And it was uh, uh, out of desperation and fear. I, yeah, Ryan, short term. But short term, I work hard tonight at the restaurant and I make money short term. And I work tomorrow and I work Sunday and I work Monday. Uh, I think finding one right job is far more important than... Uh, Finding six different jobs. Yeah, but Christine, you're struggling. <laughs> you're struggling in a lot of ways. And I'm, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, Christine, but you reach out to me and you're struggling. And you wanted to come to Yellowstone with me last uh, season. So maybe you should, you know, uh, listen to that. So... Mm. Yeah, you're doing well financially, Christine. But financially is just a small component. You're watching my show because you're struggling spiritually or relationship-wise or emotionally. And I know that because you've messaged me before. And I'm only talking to you because you're saying it here. And you've reached out to me before. And you said, I wish I could go off and live in Yellowstone with me. And, uh, yeah. So, financially, it's just one part of the puzzle. And, uh, yeah, if you're lacking in those other ways, and that's what I'm talking about uh, with having the confidence or the positive attitude, uh, I've made money before. And it certainly wasn't by working five different jobs, I promise you that. Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh. But anyway, it's Friday morning. I'm excited about my day. I am. I am. Chip, I'm working today. I wish I was just working tonight. Actually, I don't. Working at noon. Don't know when my shift will be over. Could be 11 o'clock tonight. It could be a long, long uh, shift. And <laughs> Aurora said working multiple jobs does add stress. I'm just telling you, working multiple jobs, uh, yeah. I think you're better off finding a right job. Infinitely better. I already have multiple jobs. I create content and I wait tables. You know, and both pay. Uh, I think the knee-jerk reaction is, you know, and I've talked about it before. I was uh, going through my first divorce and I was working three jobs. <laughs> and <laughs> I was a realtor. I was waiting tables and I was working at uh, Lifetime Fitness as a uh, front uh, desk guy welcoming people in. And during my divorce, 
uh, my first wife's attorney said that I'm gainfully employed with three jobs. And I promise you, <laughs> nobody that has three jobs is, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Aurora says, what I am hearing from you, that being a realtor is not a very lucrative job selling houses. It can be. I think in most sales jobs, uh, you know, the top 5% do well, maybe 10. Uh, you've all probably heard the 80-20 law that 20% um, of the salespeople make 80% of the money, and it applies to everything. But I think that's true in real estate, and I think probably 10% of the realtors make 90% of the uh, money. And if you're not in that top 10% in a whole bunch of different professions, you're going to find yourself on the outside looking in. And, uh, yeah, you're going to find yourself on the outside looking in. Um, so that's, therefore, <laughs> I think it's super important to find the right job. And find the job that you are in the top 10%. Because if you're in six different jobs but you're in the bottom 20% of what you do in each of them, uh, you're going to be less than making much less than the guy that's at the top of his field and the job that was right. And, uh, yeah. Hello, Stephen Weaver. How are you? How are you? I hope you're well. Uh, Aurora is very talkative this morning. Aurora must have great typing skills because Aurora is engaging in conversations with several different people. And I'm trying to keep up. Uh, I make too much money. <laughs> hey, Vanessa, that's funny that they say you make too much money with Amazon. That's a tough thing. Uh, Vanessa said they applied for benefits or state help or assistance. And she said she makes too much money working at the job she does. And well, I get it. And I do believe in smaller government. Uh, that's a tough predicament to be in. Uh, work your way up and get a promotion and then lose your benefits. Uh, so. All right, Josh Mack, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah. Well, we have a nice audience today, and I don't know how much I have for you. I don't know when I started talking. I do know it's 7.15 uh, this morning, and it's Friday. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. The last couple days have been kind of chilly and... Uh, uh, windy, but it looks like it's going to be a sunshiny day. And <laughs> I'm going to ride my scooter to an interview at 10 o'clock. And then I'm going to ride my scooter to work at 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to work as with the best possible attitude I can, even though I now realize, and it's somewhat refreshing. I tell you what, it's somewhat refreshing being able to turn the page on something emotionally because I think I was making a temporary stop on the highway, my permanent residence in my uh, current waiting job. And uh, uh, struggling and needing to get extra tables and extra shifts and scraping by and doing what have you. But in some ways it's mentally free and shutting the page on that and uh, narrowing my focus, if you will. Narrowing my focus. Somebody named Rutabaga just joined. Mm. Oh, that's right, Rutabaga. U of I. Got a lot of U of I viewers on today, apparently. Uh Good morning, Champagne. although I am not from Champaign. I'm coming at you from Naperville, Illinois. Mm. Oh. 
Anyway, it's Friday morning. Just finishing up my second cup of coffee. I'm thankful for my coffee. I'm thankful for the rest I got. I'm thankful for the roof over my head. I'm thankful for my scooter. <laughs> I'm thankful for my ex-wives that are doing a great job loving on my babies. Even my big babies. <laughs> even my baby that's off to college uh, when I'm not there for them. And... Uh, uh, I'm thankful for my day and I'm looking forward to it and no matter what happens I'm going to feel good about the interview and I'm going to go in with a good attitude and I'm going to do the best I can and see if it's a good opportunity for me and for them and uh, learn a little bit more and maybe have them learn a little bit more about me and again take hopefully the best attitude I can to work and work hard and have a good attitude and uh, take care of me and do the best I can today. Um, I've got a busy weekend and I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to my day and my day starts with a little bit more coffee and some fruit that I brought from the store last night and I'm excited to get to it. And I hope your week is going well and I hope your Friday morning is going well and I hope your coffee is hot and I hope you are feeling good. And I hope you are loving yourself. And I hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.